All right, so we back. We back. We back. Uh, last week, uh, we had a pretty heavy situation go down mm-hmm. with, uh, between <clears throat> Miss Prissy and Tide Eyes. Yeah. Um, and we talked about that on our last show, uh, our, our debut episode. Um, we randomly got a call from Miss Prissy, surprisingly. Right on time. Uh, yeah, right on time. And, uh, we got to hear a little bit of her side of, of the story. We did. Uh, but as, as a great story is, is never one-sided. So we, we definitely want to be able to talk to the other man uh, who was a part of this story. His name is Tide Eyes. Y'all know him as that. The goat. And, the legendary. Uh, the crazy thing is we have him on the line right now. He wants to... What, what was interesting to me and what I respect is that uh, when I talked to him, he said uh, they can call me whatever they want. They can, anybody can say anything that they want to say about me. And he went on with the, with the list of, of examples of things to call him. And uh, none of that faced him. But what did bother him and what he said that he wanted to make known uh, was the fact that he wanted to make it known that he was not... Uh, a, uh, an abuser of women of any sorts, yeah. and uh, right. that's the right. part um, that I just found most respectful, just the most. So uh, right now we have Tide Eyes on the line. Um, Tide Eyes, man, um, how you doing? I'm good. Besides the drama, I'm good. I'm always good. I feel you. You want to uh, have? You, did you see the the interview? I saw. A little bit of the interview, because my little brother told me about it. Tiny Eyes, he came downstairs. I thought it was ironed out because Miss Percy texts me like some days after the footage dropped, which people, I'm sure people don't know. And she called me. So when the footage came out, I was like, there's no need to explain because the, what she was trying to make me into, the footage tells you a completely different story. But if people are not into watching the footage, if that's not enough for them, Maybe I need to say something, but I, I thought by you watching it yourself, you can tell that, oh, this is just another one of those things. But I figured since she came on here and said something, I, I have to clear my name from that type of title because I work, you know, I work, can't work in some. I teach little kids, everybody, little white kids, Asian kids. You don't need that type of stuff floating around about you. You don't know who's going to hear it. Yeah, you need that moolah. Yeah, so it, if it affects my work in that type of way, I think I need to clear the air for the people that won't have a chance to see the footage. Well, when she randomly called, and, and it, the call was completely random, um, we just had to get her back on the line just to see what she had to say about the situation. Um, she she mentioned a lot, but one, one thing I wanted to know that she couldn't answer herself was what made you battle her in the very first place? Um, this is a decade old story with me and her. Miss Prissy has, when Crump started, she was the only girl that we were alive around. She wasn't the only girl crumping. She was the only girl that stayed around the creators for as long as she did, which made her into what she thinks that she now is. Whatever she's saying, this is the reason why she's saying it. She was the not queen the only of thing? Yeah, she was the only girl that stood out amongst the, the clown and then crump beef. Everybody else had kind of died out afterwards or before because there was no activity like after Battle Zone. So she was also in a relationship with one of the crumpers. I'm not going to say his name because I think she said no, but you can't. It's it's cool. All right. Well, she was in a relationship that used to be my boy, so she was always around. Now, everybody knows that crump was a contact sport. Yeah. In the when we were building before the foundations of of teaching, before all the fans and all the titles, the the movies, the everything, it was a contact sport. People were switching groups. We were trying to find the movement's heart to grow it. So we would go from house to house, dancing. It would get physical. Yeah, yeah. Miho has been slammed by Slayer. He fly has speared Queen Bee. You telling me Slayer picked up Miho? 
Yeah. Slams him on the floor. It was a, it was like a dining room and uh, Mama Toon had a it was a kitchen and it was a room we used to dance in. Slam Big Joe Artist Mio on the floor at five. Matter of fact. What did he do back? What? I don't <laughs> That's crazy. Wrestling, it was wrestling moves and crap because we watched a lot of wrestling. Yeah. It's still happening now because people still like stutter each other. It's still those days and those impact moments are still involved in crunk. Yeah. So even with the girls, they would get physical. And if a girl challenged a guy, it was even more physical back then than it has ever been now. True. So that's that's a way how lions fight. Like the see who's stronger because in crunk there is no gender kind of. When it, got, yeah. when it got into the, the strength of the body, then you can start seeing that males are more dominant and crunk has always been a male dominant dance. But yeah. females have done it just as well. They just haven't went to the extent that the, the males did. Right. So because of everything that happened with the movie, titles be created, I put the godly type of staff on crunk because my life went a different way after the movie. My life went a totally different way. I started being about the truth. At first, I didn't care. I was just a little kid with the talent. Miss Prissy and Lil C had the brains. So they were older than me. All I was comfortable with, and I was confident in the fact that I was tight. If you needed me to come rip somebody, yeah, I would yeah. beat that dude. I got these killers. <laughs> and I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be book smart. I can't sit in a meeting with you guys because I didn't graduate high school. But I can dance. Yeah, yeah. And people try to be with me with the fact. Look, wife just handed me some lemons, bro. School wasn't school wasn't pleasant for everybody. If you if you getting threatened with gang violence, you can't focus. Running from bullets. That's how it was, man. That's how it was. I grew up on a. With my mom, it was on 111th and Bud Long. This is not a good area. I went to Washington Preparatory High School at a time where gang violence was at an all-time high. So, of course, I'm not going to be at school because I'm afraid for my life. So I did not graduate high school. You have an audience to take it how they want to take it, but that's the truth about it. Dancing was my ticket. No doubt. Dancing, it has always been my ticket. In, in the, uh, go ahead, my best. In that, I practice harder than everybody. Mm -hmm. I have spent more time laughing than everybody. Yep. While they was doing juggling school, job, and home, I was laughing all day. You know what I'm saying? So I had more time on my hands than everybody. People used to make fun of me. This Prissy was one of these people. Well, I used to laugh all day. Oh, why I'm so tired? Because that's all I do is laugh. And it, it became a thing in the culture that you don't dance without laughing. So. I was doing these things off of circumstance. Who knew that I would be tied eyes? I didn't, my mom named me that. I didn't have no plan about how I was going to do this. I didn't first, I wasn't even the first one to call myself the best. Little Miho called me the best one night was dancing out on tune house. When I heard that for the first time, I never had nobody say nothing outside of my family like that about me. I wanted to keep it going. It was just something I just started believing. Right when I started believing and acting like it, people like Miss Prissy started to have a problem. Yeah, like for that, a decade. Like, like that uh, Buckets of Them All videos that, that Fitch Judah are doing. Oh, wow. You. Exactly. That's how I feel. That was, about. Ooh. Dude, and that, those were coming out before I really even knew how to work YouTube. Yeah. They had to tell me about YouTube. I didn't even know about it because I didn't care. It was on Medicaid. Nobody was recording footage anyway. Yeah. We wasn't recording footage. The only footage that I was looking at was the footage of me and me home when we were making up certain moves inside the house. Yeah. We used to write our moves down in the notebook and we used to record our moves on cam. Mm -hmm. That was the first piece of footage I knew about and the Crumb Kings footage that we could never get from Koki because you know how that went. Right. I know y'all split up. I don't know the details. Really? Yeah. I, I just know that y'all went separate ways. A whole bunch of ignorant young black children who just want mm. a chance to shine. And somebody who knows the business and knows how to make money off those people. Mm. I seen a and, uh, I seen I seen a post from Koki uh, a while back uh, that said that uh, it was as far as between you and him, 
uh, it was that you didn't make things on time or certain meetings or whatever. And in his words, it was like as if you accuse uh, God as you him directing you in a different path uh, at the last minute. Or he, in his in his the, if I remember correctly, it was his way of saying that you were just using that as an excuse to not make certain meetings or something like that. Is that I, how do you respond to that? It wasn't an excuse, it was a reality. I had a spiritual mentor when I first got mm-hmm. saved. I was a mentor by this dude named David. Now, a lot of things that I wanted to do, I thought that I was doing God's work by listening to him, because I never had a father. I haven't seen mm-hmm. my father since I was four. It's mm-hmm. not a horror story. It's letting you know the importance of what I was doing, why I thought it was important. Yeah, yeah. Now, some, a male figure walk in after, you know, decades of you not having a male figure and says, look, this is mm-hmm. how... I want you to do things. This is what God is telling me to tell you. I'm like, okay, God is a big deal. I'm not going to play around or question if you telling you, you telling me that God is telling you to tell me something. Yeah. So I was telling my plans. People like, God said, don't do this. I'm like, well, I don't understand why I would not be able to do something like this. Hence the reason why I never went into the industry as soon as everybody else, why I just didn't do certain things. Yeah, I heard you turn down things like jobs with uh, T.I. and a few other people. And the Oscars. Yeah, yeah well, none of that money? It was, yeah, the uh, yeah. Missy Elliott, the for Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Man. Chris Brown, I heard tours, all that. Exactly. I turned it all down. In my mind, I was fighting for the greater good. Like, I had a job to do. I had a mission. I was on a mission for God. This is what I was being taught. That's what was being preached to. So I was like, okay, well, I need to stay in line with this. And everything else was secondary. All right, so let me ask you a question. I know that, well, this is Neptune that's asking you this. I'm under crush. I'm Jedi crush. I was on So You Think You Can Dance and whatever the case is. But, uh, you know, I crumped with stuff, too. But, um, like, I met you a while back, a long time ago, man. I'm from the Bay, and I met you with Antoine, and um, he used to be known as Frost and stuff back then. Boy Solo, um, so on and, and so forth. Um, for me, I felt as if it's like the different mentors that you came across that what kind of like detours you from what you wanted to do from what's in your heart. Is that something that like held you back from doing from what you wanted to do vice versa to what you thought was right because of your mentors? Like is that what like detours you in different ways in life with, with the decisions that you made? Yeah. I did a lot that my mentors told me to do because yeah. I never had, never had one. So I wanted to be a good student. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right on. So I wasn't like, I was. I didn't want to disrespect leadership yeah. because all of my life has pointed to me being a leader. So I wanted to learn first how to be one. Meanwhile, I was already in a leadership position, so I was trying to do things that I thought would be right not for me, but for everybody around me. And that caused me to do a couple of things that I really wanted to do. I just didn't understand why I couldn't do it. But it didn't affect me. I wasn't mad about it. But the friends that I got with, it made me a better person morally. Mm-hmm. And I, I learned how to not have so much of a temper, how to let things slide, how to forgive people, how to ignore people. You know, I, I was with, I was in a marriage. So that, that changed me a lot. And... I started to love people more instead of just, you know, just skating through life without without a care. I used to be like that. Mm. So I wouldn't say it stopped me from doing everything I wanted to do because that became what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make God happy if, by listening to the people that he put in my life, if you get you know what I'm saying. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to harp on it too long, but just, just real quick, um... What, what was your initial reaction when you saw the post from Ms. Priest? Or did you even actually see the post yourself? No, I didn't see the post myself. Okay. Somebody sent it to me, somebody screenshot it, sent it to me okay. after I talked to Ms. Priest. Okay. So how did it make you, did it make you feel any, like it make you feel any different since you talked to her prior to you receiving a message? Or well, did you still no, feel the Ms. same? Prissy. She is, a, she is a drama queen. Nothing that she does or says surprises me because I've been hearing it for the last 10 years. Yeah, I told her the first time because she said this, though. 
Yeah, I told her. She has no room. She has no room to say anything about anybody in this movement at any time. Miss Chrissy has been trying to battle me for years. I wish Miho was here. Miho had something. I came with Miho. I was dressed in it. I was in a dress shirt, a scarf. I had on church shoes. What brand? I came to celebrate. What Miho, brand? She got off. Was it Louis Vuitton? Was it? That boy said what brand? I was, I was in a whole. I was in a whole different element. She saw me. Yeah. Miss Prissy has this thing. When she sees me, if her stomach drops, if she thinks she's scared, she'll try to do something extra out or it depends on what atmosphere she is, she's gonna try to test me. So that was the first time she actually came up physically and tried to get at me, like physically, like kicking me in the chest. She kicked you in the chest? Like, I'm, yeah, I'm about to tell you the the stuff that she ain't never gonna say. She's she smart you. Like, yeah, let, let, yeah, let's get that. She kicked me in the chest one time. She grabbed my nut sack. She was doing the move and grabbed my nut, grabbed my hole, everything. So I'm like, all right, you know. And to me, I'm like, maybe no, you yeah, don't I'm have sorry. control. <laughs> but if you don't have control over what you're doing, maybe you just caught up in the heat of the moment. But Miss Prissy was never a person. Like, I'm like, dude. You a chick, I don't have, I'm not going to get no satisfaction out of getting off on you. I'd rather get off on you if you were somebody that can challenge me, like, in a skillful way. Miss Christy ain't, no cha- ain't never been no challenge for me. That's why I never battled her. She always wanted to battle me because she wanted to know how she would do. It's like people want to know how they will battle me. You know, respectful battle. They say level up battle. I want to see what I can do. Right, yeah. It was always that with her. And I'm like, nah, I don't feel like it because I know the emotions that are tied to it because yeah. of the years. So but when she kicked me in my chest the first time, I'm like, all right, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good tonight. I'm not going to get off on you tonight. You feeling good? I'm, she's, she's had a stroke. She's had kids. I'm like, you know, I'm going to let you. I know where it's coming from. And I told Miho, Miho's like, yo, chest, just chill. I said, no, I, I understand. I understand what she's trying to say. I'm not going to bother her. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people just need to get that off. Maybe she don't know what to say to me, so she got to put it in the crowd. I'm good. I do it. So, so I mean, I, I, I just real quick. I mean, are y'all friends? Because, I mean, at the Wonder Woman event when we were there, uh, this disco, I, I, I saw y'all kind of mingling. It looked like y'all were kind of cool and cordial. So, I mean, are y'all even friends or what's going on with that? You are not friends. I know how to be cordial. And I'm not going to down talk you to make myself look good or feel better. I'm not going to trust you. It's only she, You're an associate. But I do not trust this person because I know what type of woman she is. Yeah. She's she, not somebody that I would call for any help or put in my business. She's just not that type of person. She's a person I say, hi and bye to. I know you've done something. I have a story that I can tell to make people either think good about you or bad about you. I just choose to tell them the truth. Look, Miss Prissy is this person. This is what she's done. You can decide to mess with her if you want. It doesn't matter to me. This is Crump. Crump is bigger than me. That's why I introduced her to this little camera crew I had at the, at the Wonder Woman. Like, they want to know the story. I'm like, well, she's part of the story. She's a big part of the story. Talk to her. Matter of fact, let me introduce y'all. We're not friends, but I have sense. Okay. Right on, because I can be the in, in her interview, she said the reason she was even there in the first place is because you spoke highly of her uh, in India, um, and the, I guess that part confused us or her in general because she said she was on initially coming there to thank you or like what was the vibe that she gave off that that just made you want to to dance and get off just get off on the period i I speak highly of miss prissy india i don't even remember bringing up prissy's name in Mm. to be honest with you i don't know where she got that story from but i'm like i was in india I was with my girl. We wasn't concerned about no Miss Prissy. Nobody asked me. If I'm telling the story about Crump, I mentioned Miss Prissy, but I don't remember mentioning her or book her or whatever. It was just, I had nothing to do with me. Mm. Maybe from the story that I told, because I told the truth about Crump from the day it started. 
and Miss Prissy was in it, nobody told anybody to call Miss Prissy or book her. Maybe they chose to do it on their own, but I had nothing to do with that book. I'm not, don't give me credit for something that I really didn't do. I wasn't trying to get you booked in India. I wasn't concerned about you getting booked in India. She was at the Wonder Woman event because it was an event, not to thank me or nothing. She had no idea I was going to bring a camera crew there and introduce her to the people. That just happened on the fly. So I don't want you to get this thing like we be talking and I do stuff for her, we do stuff for each other. No, everything that happened was when Prissy happened on a random note. I do not conversate with that woman. Yeah, she if said, she see me at a section, be talking to me, that's it. It don't go no further than that. She said uh, she felt like you were envious of her wave when she was dancing in the session. No. So she, she felt Nigga, like you were in the you wasn't giving her respect. I went to the DC session before I left. This is like October, October, November last year. I'm in the session. I'm getting off on HB. I promise HB. Every time I see you, I'm getting off it. So we have a forever battle plan in motion. Yeah. Miss Prissy sees me, and because we had the DC session, she knows it's not my session. All the other eyes are there. Miss Prissy comes straight to me. You can ask Little Tight, Jay Tight, or anybody else with eyes that was there. And I'm like, all right. I said, Miss Percy, here we go again. You know, and she's physical once again because she's a chick and she's trying to let me know that she's strong. When you're in the heat of the moment, you get physical with somebody like me because I'm a legend, I'm an OG. You can't just dance at me because you know what's coming. You have to do something physical to make people believe that what you're doing is wrong or whatever. So she did it at the DC. And I'm like, mm. I'm not going to get off on her right now. I'm going to let her be. Second time. This is the second consecutive time. I'm like, all right. I come back from two and a half months in Australia. I'm with my girls. I'm with my girl and her fam. I just take a vacation, something I've never done before. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm in India. My mom has a heart attack. So, my mom is now, they said she's brain dead, so I'm dealing with that during judge demos. Oh, wow. I come home on a, I come home on a different level. My mom went from mama eyes, my mom does not speak, she cannot walk, and she does not move. Like right now? She can, right now. Wow. Today, right now. And I've been dealing with this since India. So, I go from spiritual to natural, to sad, to happy, all in one day. I have a new relationship now. My old relationship is gone. I'm learning how to do things. I have no mentors. I'm just doing things on my own, how I right. see fit, what will make me happy, and hopefully I can please God at the same time. That's where I'm at in life. Mm. I'm 31. I just turned 31. I have no time for dramatics. Mm. I'm an entertainer, yes, but my crump is real. The, the, where I dance from is a real place. I pull it from these type of things. So I don't have to be a violent person. So I don't have to be the type of person that you wouldn't want to see on a personal level. So, all December, Christmas time, mom's in the hospital laid up. I have to work my butt off so my brothers can have good Christmases. You know, ain't nobody handing out nothing just because I created crumb. I'm not a rich man. Yeah. In a two bedroom apartment. This is just reality. <laughs> I'm not mad at people, but this is what it is. So people were welcoming me home. Like finally, I took a rest. He's handling something in his life. Everybody knows about my mom. They don't know the, the details. They're like, let's give him a welcome home session. You know, let's try to let's let's show him that we got his back, that we tight. If he need us, this is just how people show me their appreciation with Carl. I didn't ask for nothing. I just wanted to come home and go to sleep. I come home. Session starts, everybody is dancing. I don't even plan on dancing, I'm just watching everybody like that. I've been in Australia watching everybody else dance. I've been to Korea, India, so I'm Did like, you watch my footage? I watch you versus Baby Eyes. Yeah. This guy. Yeah, I watched it. This guy. <laughs> I'm about. Did you watch my footage? You need, you need all the crumb you can get. You know, when you're, when you're around another atmosphere, I was just chilling most of the day, so I'm like, I'm, I'm watching all the footage, catching up on everything. Yeah. So I come home, and Miss Prissy walks through the door. 
And I'm like, okay, I know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know what she be on when she comes to overhide with the skate park. I know what she be on. I just hope that she don't get on none of that because I'm not in the mood to let her slide. Mm. That's where my mind is. I'm like, all this crump testing she been doing, tonight I'll actually give her some rounds. Like, tonight I'm, I'm not going to let nothing slide. That's where I'm at. You just get tired of people testing. I'm you know, like, Miss Prissy don't get a pass that she Miss Prissy and she a woman because Miss Prissy don't like lady tight eyes with his yaya. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact that she's a crumper. It's because she's white. You see what I'm saying? She has different morals. Yeah. Miss mm -hmm. Prissy has a problem with white women that crump, even though it's all white women in Russia. Exactly. The Czech Republic. Yeah. They're all white. So, because she has the name Lady Tide Eyes, you have double hate for her because she's in the D.C. session, and Miss Prissy is socking and kicking on her. Mm. That's crazy. So, Miss Prissy <clears throat> has no problem getting physical, but because of her position and because people don't want to hurt her, they let her do it. Because you feel sorry for her. You don't want to hurt the woman, but I'm not. He fly. You know, Goldberg, how he spears people? He did it to Queen B. He did it to a chick. Nobody made a big fuss about it. Miss mm. Prissy was on him kicking and socking Yaya, which is Lady Todd Ice. At a DC mm. session, nobody said nothing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Miss Prissy's kicking, kicking Negroes in the back, socking Negroes in the head. She's been doing this for years, though, and people let it fly because it's doing it to a guy so and the moment you do a 0.5 kilosecond choke gesture grab snatch, all hell breaks loose. yeah and I'm like Miss Prissy started her session round with me yeah people weren't recording because we were just sessioning people only record battles at the overhide mm -hmm. everybody knows this this is the reason why her rounds weren't captured but everybody in that circle saw Miss Christy jump in the circle. Two seconds later, she's in my face. Two seconds later, I'm like, what is it that she's trying to prove to me? I'm just not in the mood. I'm not in the mood tonight. And even after that, her first round, she was physical. I did not dance. Well, I danced afterwards. I was like, I just, I don't think, I'm not ready to get off right now. I haven't even warmed up. I've just been watching people dance. Mm -hmm. Her second round, she comes back. These rounds are not on camera. Her second round, she comes back. After her first round, she's like, how oh, you like that welcome home I just gave you? I don't even answer her because I'm just, I'm past what she's saying. Right. Just cool. kind of look down and like get in my zone. Like that first round just got you in a lot of trouble. I just got to figure out when and how I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Because I know you're going to make it dramatic. So I'm trying to think what's the best way, but I'm going to get off on you. That's my mind. Do you so oh. her second round, she comes after me again. And I'm like, all right, music stops. And I'm like, what, what is it? I'm, I'm asking people, like, should I battle her? Like, should I really? Like, man, just do what you want. Third round comes, she's in the circle, and that's when the music had cut off on her. It was just the end of the track. Nobody cut the music. Nobody set any battle up. How can you set a battle up from a session? Nobody's setting anybody up. Nobody started rolling the camera. When I said so, I didn't, I didn't even know a camera was present until after the override. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she said the, she felt set the up. The person that usually records is LeVar. LeVar was not mm -hmm. even there. Little Rip usually records. Right. He's not even living in the city right now. So, so, when I decide, when I decide I'm going to get off on her, I wait till her round is finished. Now, she walked away because the track went off. And she was like, oh, she was walking away with this. She was just, my round is over. Yeah, you saw what I did, the tight eyes. It's just a thing. She's talking to the hooligans. And she started talking about something totally different. My walk to her. I didn't tell nobody to follow me. People got this thing that everybody in the Todd Ice fam is dick riders or whatever. I walk over there by my man self. I didn't tell nobody to follow me because I'm 
still deciding, should I really get off on her or not? Like, I know she's going to make a big deal out of this, but she shouldn't because she's been testing me for years on a personal level, and she keeps testing me on a dance level. Let me just put a little heat on you that I put on all the people that you've seen. You've seen me battle hundreds of people. I'm going to make you feel how they felt. But I have to do it in a way I don't feel like battling here all night. I know I'm going to have to give you a couple of rounds for you to understand. I walked to Miss Prissy, and I said, I'm finally going to get you. That was my only thing I said to her. Yeah. I'm finally going to get you. You brought this on yourself. I walked back, and that's when she goes to the camera like, oh, if it was set up, why would she be responding like that to the camera when the battle officially started with me? She had been at me three rounds prior. Yeah. Mm. That was my first time responding. That's why she was like, oh, it's going to be buck, whatever. So how do you go from that? My first round, I didn't even, I came in her face, and everything I was doing, it was like imagination. She got what I was saying. That round, she was like, okay. So she gave me a round back. And then for the fourth time in one night, she jumped and she socked me at the top of my head. She socked you pretty hard. At that point, yeah, at that point, I'm like, uh, you know, she's not going to stop. The more I get off on her, the more physical she's going to get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I should be able to eat a punch from a woman any day. If, if I flip because a woman hit me, that makes me less of a man. So that means I should be able to take it. Yeah. That's why I always tell you, I'm like, all right, you know, my next round is coming. I'm going to put a little heat on her. She want to make it a eye. She want to make it a eyes wide moment. So let's do it. My next round, I did not even touch the skin on her neck. My hands were apart to where I couldn't even feel her neck. Mm-hmm. I was moving towards the back of the room, so I couldn't have grabbed a hold and still been doing my footwork. I was a very strategic. I had my hands locked. But her, her neck was in between. I did not choke her. I did not batter her. I did not physically abuse her. And after the choke move, which was imagery, it wasn't even a real, I could see if I would have squeezed her neck, like gave her a good squeeze to where she couldn't breathe. She was breathing just fine. Like Homer and her Bart. neck wasn't moved. Yeah, and it was one second. How can you choke the life out of somebody in one second? Yeah. Yep. I move. And I'm moving the session. She was fine yeah. after the move. If you watch the footage, she was perfectly fine. Yeah. If it was abuse like that, she would have flipped and jumped wild. Yeah, that's right what away. I said. Yeah. But the, the like the antics after, Whoa. that's when she got embarrassed. That caused a different emotion. I said because that was yeah, a kill off. That slide, yeah, that hat, was cool. that hat down the face. She has never been killed off. You see what I'm saying? She has never been killed off. Mm. On in public, by her worst enemy, on footage. Now, mm. off of one simple one second move, it was just the timing and who it was doing it, and she flipped from the celebration that was happening. Miss mm-hmm. Prissy has watched that happen to hundreds of crumpers, but now she was in the hot seat. She couldn't take it. She was like, that was a bust. You had to do that, though. You got to end. But while I'm dancing, she's trying to talk to me. You see me go, shh, just move, please. Just move, please. Yeah. Okay? Talk from over there. I understand. I know you, Miss Prissy. You're going to go, yeah, you going to say it all. I know. Can you please move so I can finish my round? She's like, yeah, prove yourself to the queen. You're a peasant. You're under me. Like, you're trying to take it past. Woman, ain't nobody under you. Like, this going to the side so we can finish this battle. You can talk all that online, which you're going to do anyway. But after this next round, you're not going to be happy. I know what I'm about to do to you. Mm. I don't know exactly what I'm going to use, but I know I feel something coming. It's not because I'm mad that you were. I don't grade you to be tight or whack in a session because I just don't watch. I don't care, Miss Prissy thinks. I came to your session, I was shining. It wasn't even my session. It was my welcome home session. I haven't been to the overhype. There hasn't been no overhypes. Mm. There was only one prior to that one. There has been no overhypes. We don't have a session. Do you regret? We go to the session. Do you regret this decision at this point, or do you 
as, as far as succumbing to the battle or the pressure, uh, you know, your own decision on whether you should or not. I mean, how do you feel about it at this point? Like, do you feel like it was good that it happened, or do you wish you could take it back? Yeah, I don't. No, I don't wish I could take it back because I ain't do nothing to the woman. The woman was trying to make me seem like I was, a, I was physically abusing her in the battle and people was okay with it. Like, woman, I put my hands around your neck, didn't even touch your skin and moved on one second after. Yeah. You didn't like the embarrassment that came with that footage and what people were thinking about your style versus tie eyes. So, she's talking crazy in my face. This is after. I'm like, Miss Prissy, are you going to dance or are you going to keep talking? She's like, and by the way, if you ever put your hands on me again, it's going to be problems. I'm like, all right, this person's done. You didn't put your hands on many people, and you claim to be this OG. You watch way worse happen. You need to step to the side. Are you going to dance or are you going to talk? And she was like, yeah, next time I'm bringing my nigga up here. I'm like, all right, now you just talk. I said, read the hat, beast, right? Remember that about me. And I wiped my hat on her face. Her face wasn't scratched, welt, or I didn't smack her with my hat. It was the embarrassment that she was facing. And then she socked me once in the chin and once in the back of the head. Oh, so she did hit you that first time. Mm. Yeah. Two piece. Uh, what was it, Louisiana chicken? Two piece? Is that what she called it? That's what she called it. She yeah, said, I'm like, Louisiana chicken. Two I piece. knew that she was going to do it. So I'm like, I just know. So I'm like, okay. And you just did that for what? You think I'm not going to get off on you? I'm going to get off on you one more time just for the road. And after that, Spartan is like, all right, now you got to get out because you're not about to sock no more niggas. Because now you're embarrassed. Now you're wilding out. You're trying to figure out a way to stop this embarrassment. You're trying to stop it from... So now I have physically abused her online. Mm-hmm. Really, Miss Griffin. Really. That's what she said, man. And I questioned her, too. I told her that post was dramatic. Um, well, she said she was. She, and she it admitted was to it too. too. She, 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 she definitely admitted to her faults. It was drama, and that it was overly emotional. And her la- some of her last words was that, in that first post. she does wish you well. And if I mean, she didn't put a cap on y'all's relationship or how that went, but she definitely admitted to her faults and you know how she could be reaching about certain situations. But overall, it was just more or less how she felt. Uh, and I guess that's just how I went down, but we definitely questioned her on that. Um, what, one thing that she mentioned that did kind of interest me as far as just the death of that, like, what, why is it that you don't find too many people from the first generation to really, you know, ride with you like that? I never asked anybody to ride with me. I was getting all new people. I was about spreading the movement. Right. The OGs, back in the day, were about keeping it to themselves. Miss Chrissy won in total. Like, she never wanted the movement to spread. She always used to tell me, this is us. This ain't them, this is us. Like, no. It's not going to get us nowhere. I was getting new people, new faces. Every time I had a group of little homies, those people you never seen before. Why would I rock with these old people that I've been rocking with that ain't moving nowhere? The OGs from old, they ain't moving nowhere still. Well, the disrespectful for what they have done, they haven't done anything new. They always had that work ethic, so why would I ask them to ride with me? It's not that everybody was like, have tied eyes. Some people are like that, but everybody, some of them, some of them just stopped dancing because life took them in a different way. Everything ain't because of tied eyes. Everybody didn't stop dancing because of tied eyes. It, that story is old, drawn out, and it needs to be thrown away. Mm-hmm. Life start whooping people. Everybody can't dance to make a living. Some yeah. of them start DJing. Some of them start making music. Some you of them make podcasts called the Junkyard Gang. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Nice. He was making music. He was with the Nef Squad. He was a little thief, so he played both sides. Yo. He ain't dancing no more. He making music. All right, so we... we, we All right, so let me ask you this question, man. We've been on the same subject for, like, a cool minute. So let me ask you this question. It's Neptune. Um... So, as far as in, like, your spiritual leaders and stuff like that, they haven't been riding with you, and you kind of, like, been off doing your own thing and stuff now. Let me ask you this. Do you still feel like God is still riding with you? And at the same time, do you still feel as if, like, you're implementing God just as much as you did back in the day with Crump? Like, with the new generation of Crump? Crump has saved people's lives, but you can't force God into nobody's life. Yeah. 
and even the leaders, the leaders go through, when a leader goes through a test, everybody wants to judge, and everybody wants to have their own opinions because they see it publicly. But you weren't saying that when you were the one needed, needing the help and you needed that leader to be whatever. And nobody ever believed that I was saved anyway. Everybody always tested me <laughs> to bring something bad out of me. Now I don't necessarily care about what you think. Like, now it's, it's like, oh, did you forget about God? I'm like, did you? How about you start, you know? Before you go into my past and my present, how about you start something in the midst of all of this ridicule and try to continue it just for a little while, then we can 